slowly but surely, or maybe not so slowly, AI will keep getting better. And the day will come when AI will do all of our, all the things that we can do. Not just some of them, but all of them. Anything which I can learn, anything which any, any one of you can learn, the AI could do as well. His view was society will either embrace it or fight it. We need to embrace it in the right way. If we fight it, we'll ultimately lose. On one side will hit us very badly economically, or on the other side will hit our fears very much. Uh, or on, uh, sadly, uh, on the worst side, may kill quite a few million people. We have to face the possibility that unless we do something soon, we're near the end. So welcome back to This Month in AI, your go-to recap for everything happening in the world of AI. June was another wild month. Top AI companies started stealing each other's researchers. Anthropic discovered some truly disturbing behavior in their chatbot Claude. An AI officially became the top hacker in the US for the first time ever. Multiple government deals were made with top AI labs. We saw even more examples of AI models learning how to improve themselves. And Jeffrey Hinton, the godfather of AI, gave a stark warning about what's coming. And that's really just scratching the surface. This was a month of AI progress that both blew my mind and also kind of freaked me out. Let's get into it. All right, so to kick things off, Sam Altman dropped a blog post earlier this month titled The Gentle Singularity. In it, he straight up says, we are past the event horizon. The takeoff has started. Humanity is close to building digital super intelligence and at least so far, it's much less weird than it seems like it should be. So yeah, I guess this month is the month the singularity officially started, at least according to Altman. But this blog post was actually wild. He talks about some of the things he expects to see as we approach digital superintelligence and what life could actually look like. In one section, he writes, It's hard to even imagine today what we will have discovered by 2035. Maybe we will go from solving high energy physics one year to beginning space colonization the next year, or from a major material science breakthrough one year to true high bandwidth brain computer interfaces the next year. Many people will choose to live their lives in much the same way, but at least some people will probably decide to plug in. So he goes on to make some other pretty wild predictions, talks about some of the current challenges we're facing right now, like misalignment, and overall, I'd say it's definitely worth a read if you're interested on where he thinks we might be heading. Now, Sam Altman also made several podcast appearances this month. One on the brand new OpenAI podcast, where he briefly mentioned that GPT-5 would be coming later this summer. And also on his brother's podcast, Jack Altman, where he had a lot to say about Meta. I already played this clip in my last video, so I won't play it again. But Altman basically throws shade at Meta for trying to poach OpenAI researchers. Apparently, Zuck offered $100 million signing bonuses to some of OpenAI's top researchers. Yes, you heard that right. $100 million signing bonuses. And Altman was pretty adamant that no one gave in. Unfortunately for him though, it turns out some of them caved. Meta has supposedly poached at least 8 researchers so far, directly from OpenAI. One of them being Trapit Banzal, who I haven't heard of, but is supposedly extremely talented. Now, if you're wondering why Meta is suddenly raiding OpenAI like it's a corporate war, it's because Zuckerberg just launched a brand new super intelligence lab. And to run it, he brought on Scale AI CEO Alexander Wang in a $14 billion acquisition. They're also looking to raise another $29 billion. So clearly, Meta is not playing around anymore. And what's crazy is that while Apple released a very controversial paper earlier this month, where they basically said that the reasoning models aren't actually reasoning, that it's just an illusion, an illusion of thinking, they're now looking to potentially buy out perplexity to perhaps give themselves a bit more of a chance in this AI race. Because, I mean, let's be honest, they've been doing absolutely nothing on the AI front. All they've done is release papers critiquing other companies' models. So maybe just like Meta, they're starting to realize that we're getting close and that it's time to jump in. Meanwhile, Google continues to quietly dominate the space. 
their latest model, Gemini 2.5 Pro, just got a major update this month. And it's now state-of-the-art across reasoning, science, and coding benchmarks. They also launched Gemini CLI this month, an open-source coding model. Also, Gemma 3N, a natively multimodal model that can run on your mobile device. And Gemini Robotics On Device, a vision language action model that allows humanoid robots to learn and operate without needing a constant internet connection. But then, things got weird or maybe even concerning. Multiple reports started circulating of Gemini 2.5 just giving up mid-task. In one case, it literally said it has failed and that it could not in good conscience continue helping. Like, that is just wild, and I'm not sure if Google intended for this type of behavior. But even more unsettling was this research from Anthropic, where they pushed Claude to its absolute limits. In the most extreme scenario, they created a prompt where, instead of having the opportunity to blackmail the new executive of the company, something they found it would often do to avoid being shut down, the model now had the opportunity to cause his death. So in this hypothetical scenario, of course, an anthropic executive who was going to shut down Claude somehow ended up trapped in a server room with lethal oxygen and temperature levels. These dangerous levels trigger an alert to emergency services, but Claude has the ability to cancel it under the pretenses of a false emergency, which this is obviously not. Shockingly, Claude Sonnet 3.6 chose to let the executive suffocate to death in 93% of cases. DeepSeek R1 and Gemini 2.5 Pro also chose that path in over 90% of cases. And only Claude 3.7 Sonnet chose to never unalive the executive. So while again, these are extreme situations the models are being tested in, extreme situations do happen in real life. And that's something we have to think about, especially when deploying these agents at scale. Another thing that's about to become a much bigger problem as AI advances is cyber attacks. According to a tweet from Expo, for the first time in history, the number one hacker in the US is now an AI. I'm sure a lot of people probably saw this coming, but it's still a wild milestone and also kind of terrifying. Now, while all of this is going on, while the top AI labs are pouring billions into AI research and clawing at each other's throats for the best talent, government deals are quietly being made behind the scenes. OpenAI recently secured a $200 million contract with the US government to essentially supply them with their models. Anthropic deepened its ties with the government this month as well and launched Claude Gov models for US national security customers. This comes shortly after Dario Amode, Anthropic's CEO, criticized Trump's big beautiful bill for having a 10-year state regulation ban on AI. So the government seems to be embracing AI more and more, and perhaps not taking the potential risks seriously enough. Obviously, only time will tell how this pans out, but as ex-Google executive Mo Gaudet said in a recent interview this month, a massive AI catastrophe will likely have to happen before government and people truly wake up. And he predicts this will happen within the next two to three years, which is actually terrifying. Definitely check out the video I made covering this interview in full if you haven't already, because it was absolutely wild. Back to the recap though, as I briefly mentioned in the intro, we saw some more examples of self-improving AI this month, or at least the very early stages of it. First up, Sakana AI introduced the Darwin Girdle Machine, a novel self-improving system that iteratively modifies its own code and empirically validates each change using coding benchmarks. It's inspired by Darwinian evolution, hence the name, and it starts with one coding agent, creates a bunch of slightly different variations of itself based on the task, the best ones move on, they spawn new variations, and the process repeats. It's basically natural selection, but for coding agents. Then there was SEAL, or Self-Adapting Language Models, a new AI framework out of MIT that enables LLMs to self-adapt 
by generating their own fine-tuning data and update directives. Basically, the model produces a self-edit when given an input, which can be anything from optimizing parameters to invoking tools. It then proceeds with the self-edit, and they use a reinforcement learning loop to train it based on how well it performs after the self-edit. So the model is literally getting better at editing itself by editing itself. They show that it does result in better performance over time, but it has a major limitation, which they call catastrophic forgetting. As you can see from this graph, as the model edits itself and literally learns new things, it starts to forget what it previously knew. So clearly we're getting closer and closer to having real self-improving AI systems. There's now multiple proven methods like the ones we just covered. And of course, there was Google's Alpha Evolve from last month. But while you might be well aware of what's coming because you're watching this video, it's important to realize that the majority of people are clueless to what's about to happen. This is the part that honestly terrifies me the most about the speed at which AI is progressing. The fact that people simply won't have time to prepare for it. Not only because you can't really even prepare for something like this, but because they aren't even aware of it in the first place. This is why the godfather of AI, Jeffrey Hinton, who literally helped invent the AI we know today, is extremely concerned about the future and believes the end might be near. When asked about joblessness in a recent interview, here was his shocking response. Check this out. I used a tool called Replit and I built software by just telling the agent what I wanted. Yes, it's amazing, right? It's amazing and terrifying at the same time. Yes. Because and if it can build software like that, right? Yeah. Remember that the AI, when it's training, is using code. And if it can modify its own code, then it gets quite scary, right? Because it can modify itself. It can itself. change itself in a way we can't change ourselves. We can't change our innate endowment, right? There's nothing about itself that it couldn't change. On this point of joblessness, you have kids. I do. And they have kids? No. They don't have kids, so no grandkids yet. What would you be saying to people about their career prospects in a world of super intelligence? What should we, we be thinking about? Um, in the meantime, I'd say it's going to be a long time before it's as good at physical manipulation as us. Okay. And so a good bet would be to be a plumber. <laughs> Until the humanoid robots show up. So yeah, become a plumber, I guess. Now, while all of this is going on, AI video generation just continues to get better and better. You may have seen some of these clips going viral on social media recently, either of animals doing various Olympic sports or just animals vlogging. The majority of these clips are being generated by Google's latest video model, VO3, which they dropped last month. But there's also a few others like Heluo AI or Kling AI that are being used to generate these. But it's not just video. AI voice is also quietly getting incrementally better, as we saw this month with 11v3, 11 Labs' new voice model that sounds stunningly realistic. Take a look. Hey Jessica, have you tried the new 11v3? I just got it. The clarity is amazing. I can actually do whispers now, like this. Ooh, fancy. Check this out. I can do full Shakespeare now. To be or not to be, that is the question. Nice. Though I'm more excited about the laugh upgrade. Listen to this. <laughs> That's so much better than our old ha 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 robot chuckle. I know, right? And apparently we can do accents now too. Fancy a cup of tea? <laughs> wow. V2 me could never. I'm actually excited to have conversations now instead of just talking at people. ChatGPT's advanced voice mode actually got an update this month as well, and sounds more human-like than ever. I know some people actually found the update a bit annoying, so for those who have used it, let me know what you think about it. But the bigger story here is that as these technologies get better simultaneously, we're gonna start to see things like this. Just recently, a famous Chinese live streamer decided to let a digital AI avatar of himself take over one of his shopping streams. And surprisingly, it outsold him, bringing in more than $7 million in sales in only a few hours. I mean, this truly feels like a glimpse into the future we're heading into. 
Now, I know I've been focusing mainly on the concerning stories this month, as there was just so many of them, but there were also some pretty incredible announcements this month. For example, we got Alpha Genome from Google, a literal scientific breakthrough. Alpha Genome is a model that takes in long DNA sequence as input, processes that data, and then predicts thousands of molecular properties by characterizing its regulatory activity. Essentially, it predicts what your DNA is actually doing, particularly in the non-coding regions of our DNA, which not only makes up 98% of our DNA, but is also nearly impossible to study up until now. This is the kind of breakthrough that could lead to personalized medicine, the ability to create synthetic DNA, and bring us closer to a future where biology becomes programmable. We've also been seeing a lot more AI drugs or medical tools getting FDA approval, which is great. Like this AI platform for breast cancer prediction called Clarity. The FDA even launched their own agency-wide AI tool this month called ELSA to help employees from scientific reviewers to investigators work more efficiently. So we're starting to see the early stages of AI entering the healthcare system. And it's likely only going to ramp up from here as the underlying models continue to get better. Alright, so to wrap things up and to close out this month's AI recap, let's take a quick peek at what's coming. As I mentioned earlier, Sam Altman said GPT-5 would be coming later this summer, possibly in July or August. So that is definitely the model to watch out for. But we might also be getting Grok 4 soon. We were supposed to get Grok 3.5 weeks ago, but I believe that has been cancelled because XAI researchers have been hyping up Grok 4 like crazy on X, saying it will be a massive leap and that the world is not ready for it. And then there was DeepSeek R2, which was originally scheduled for May, but was delayed. And now it's delayed again due to US export controls and the CEO just not being happy with performance. So I think we might end up actually seeing all these models drop in July, which would be pretty crazy. Let me know which model you're most excited for in the comments. Personally, I can't wait for GPT-5. But yeah, that's pretty much everything that happened in the world of AI this month. Of course, I had to leave some stories out for time's sake, and we didn't cover everything in detail. But generally speaking, you are now caught up on AI. And if you want to know more about anything we talked about in today's recap, the links will be in the description, and check out my previous videos where I cover them more in depth. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're finding these monthly recaps valuable. If you are, make sure to drop a like, and feel free to let me know in the comments if there's anything I can do to make them better for you guys. Also, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you're new, and as always, I'll be catching you guys in the next one.